Thank you, Mr Chairman. I call Eugenie Sage. Mr Chair, thank Can you. Well, like Dr Woods, I'd like to see a response from um, national members, and I think it's interesting that we haven't heard any calls from national members other than the Minister in support of this bill, and the only calls that there have been are to move a closure motion. And the reason for that is why would members of the National Party, particularly those ones in Canterbury, take a call when they are here because they have been elected, they are here because people voted for them democratically, so how can they defend a system that is in this bill where we have appointed rather than elected members around the council table? They know that they don't want to be accused of being hypocrites. Mr Chair, in this call, I'd like to speak specifically to Clause 27. And that is that Environment Canterbury must report to responsible ministers on the management of fresh water. And they've got to report to the ministers of local government and environment every six months um, in relation to progress on the Canterbury Land and Water Regional Plan, progress on other plans relating to the management of fresh water, and progress on the implementation of the Canterbury Water Management Strategy. Now, Mr Chair, if anyone was in any doubt that this bill wasn't about controlling the management of water in Canterbury, this clause should remove that. ECAN has a wide range of functions for the management of natural resources, for the coast, for air, for natural hazards, and for transport um, planning in the region, and for the management of pests. Yet the only provision where the council is required to report to um, the minister is in relation to water. So that shows that all the minister's arguments about needing continuity, about providing effective leadership, somehow they don't apply to all of the other uh, responsibilities of the regional council, only water. So yes, Mr Chair, this is about water. But it will be interesting to see what the minister is interested in having reports from the council on. Will he be interested, or she, in how many more rivers and lakes are unswimmable? Will they be interested in the fact that the headwater streams of the Otakaro or the Avon River are drying up? Will they be interested in the fact that the species which depend on the braided rivers in Canterbury, like the Rakaia and the Rangitara, all the rivals, the um, black-fronted tern, that those species are in deep trouble? Will they be interested in the snapshot of the state of the rivers which one submitter uh, presented, uh, just looking at incidents in October and November? identified six rivers in South Canterbury where there was uh, problems with toxic um, benthic cyanobacteria mats, where the ECAN was warning that river users should avoid the areas because of those mats, from the Opihi to the Tamuka River to the Pariora. Will the ministers be interested in those reports? I don't think so. I think they will be more interested in the amount that irrigation is proposed to be expanded in upcoming years because of the emphasis on subsidising irrigation and using that to promote extensive dairying. And yet we have an environment, sorry, we have in Canterbury a major decline in water quality, which Environment Canterbury has failed to report comprehensively on. Under an elected council, we had a very detailed and comprehensive State of the Environment report released in 2009. Under the appointed commissioners, we've only had a snapshot of their progress in meeting the targets of the Canterbury Water Management Strategy. But that was enough to show that there is a continuing decline. In lowland springfed streams on the plains, for example, in 2010, there were less than, or around 40% of those streams were in poor or very poor health in terms of the aquatic ecosystems. But in 2014, that had increased to 67%. We've got the um, Canterbury Medical Officer of Health warning midwives in the Ashburton area to discourage uh, new parents from bottle feeding babies using bore water because of the risk of blue baby syndrome and nitrate levels interfering uh, with the uptake of oxygen in the blood. Now the Minister's shaking her head but those warnings have been issued by the Medical Officer of Health and they were widely reported at the time. So at the same time as we've had water quality decreasing in Canterbury, um, we've also had an increase in non-compliance. Will the ministers under Clause 27 be interested in ECAN's role in enforcement? Recently, the press reported 
that nearly one in five water users, Mr Chair, Mr Chair. Eugenie Sage. Thank you, Mr Chair. Were guilty of significant non-compliance in relation to their water takes from streams, rivers and aquifers. They were either taking more than they were permitted by their consent conditions or they were taking when restrictions apply. So 355 irrigators were significantly non-compliant. Yet how many prosecutions did ECAN undertake? It only issued nine infringement and abatement notices. Water quality is declining, yet ECAN under the Commissioners is failing to enforce the RMA requirements adequately. And, Mr Chair, in relation to things like transport, it is really disappointing that this provision doesn't require reporting on the other of ECAN's responsibilities. Under the, uh, and that's one of the reasons why we believe that elected councillors would do a better job in areas like transport, because they would be much more responsive uh, to their communities. We have seen a major decline in patronage of bus services under the commissioners. Some of that was due to the earthquakes, but they have failed to take action in an innovative way to encourage patronage. And we've had media reports recently where we've had um, a further decline in patronage. And what are the commissioners proposing to do? Increase the fares, which is likely to lead to more decline in uh, passenger numbers. And this is with a council which was once responsible for one of the most accessible and cost-effective bus systems in the whole of Australasia before commissioners were appointed. So we'd like to see um, ECAN, the commissioners, having to report to the ministers on their other functions and not just fresh water, but the fact that this clause focuses on fresh water highlights once again that this bill is all about water and promotion of irrigation. Thank you.